Our next guest was homeless and suffered from depression. While society may have given up on him, he didn't give up on his faith. What happened next is music to your ears as far as inspirational stories go. Billy Dorsey produced songs for some of the Christian music's biggest stars, and that won him a Grammy. Well, Billy, you grew up in the church. Your parents are pastors. You weren't supposed to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the story they tell. But church kids have just as many problems as everybody else yeah. does. So. All right. So you, you grew up kind of singing to songs on the radio. Right. And your mother told you if you can sing those secular songs, then you can sing some. I can sing in the church. Yes. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. I was singing Prince, uh, Little Red Corvette, <laughs> Luther Vandross, uh, New Edition. I mean, so I'm dating myself. That was on the radio at the time. Yeah. And my mom heard me sing, and she was like, oh, okay, you can sing. But if you can sing that, boy, you can get your tail in that church and yeah. sing it too. Okay, so like the church I was in, you had to try out, and I didn't make it. Okay, so <laughs> did, did you, your, your parents were the pastor. Did you have to try out? I didn't have to try you out. You were right in. Yeah. I didn't want to try out, though, Deborah. I mean, like, I was crying, literally. I was maybe four years old. I don't even know if I was that old. Yeah. And they made me sing at a Christmas program and get up in front of the whole church and sing. And, uh, and I remember walking out, and I was horrified and crying, and I looked over. There was a little door that led to the foyer, and my mom was standing there with a belt dangling under oh. her. Like, you better sing. So I was like, Jesus <laughs> me. And, uh, but, the, but when I started singing, I closed my eyes. I was crying. I was afraid. And I, the music just came out. And I remember opening my eyes, and people in the church were shouting and falling oh. out. And I was a little kid, but I remember thinking, if something I can do can make people feel that way, that's what I want to do with yeah, the rest of the Yeah, that's when the corner life. turned for that's you. That's when the corner you turned. You loved music. Yeah. Uh, so you went on to actually do that. You were you were, you were rebellious at, at first, but then, you know, the Lord turned things around he for turned you. Uh, he turned You got it. a record deal, and you were in college at Louisiana Tech. That's when right. When you get a record deal, a lot of people think, I've made it. This that's is it. That's right. That's right. But something happened. Yeah, I signed a record deal with my group, Serenity. Uh, my brother, Emmanuel, our older friend, Lamont, moved to Houston, started working on our first album. The label decided that they wanted to replace Lamont uh, he was married at the time, older than us. He lived in Shreveport. We moved to Houston. He didn't. So there was a variety of things that were making it more difficult having him in the group from their perspective. They wanted to replace him. I fought against it out of loyalty, and they froze our contract out. So we ended up, you know, I ended up homeless. Because you couldn't sign with anybody else. I couldn't. Okay. Seven years or three albums, I was tied to that contract. So for seven years, which is God's number of completion, ah. I was locked into that contract. Yeah, which is kind of, we saw some of that behind the scenes with Prince, the reason right. why he, like, you know, Put changed slave his whole on name his face. and did That's the right. whole uh, symbol, the whole bit. So yeah. one of those things, because we have so many people who ask us, how do I make it in the business? Those are, there are things to understand there. Right. Well, for me, the big thing was I learned, one, I learned how to negotiate contracts. Mm -hmm. um, two, I learned the power of ownership, of controlling your own narrative. Uh, and three, I've learned that even if loyalty might have cost me everything, it was worth more than, Wow. You know, when you say cost you everything, you said homeless. You were, yeah. like, starving. You were bona fide oh, on the streets. Sleeping on cardboard boxes, eating out of trash cans. Like, I went through the things that they show on TV, they make homelessness look glamorous. It's not glamorous. Yeah. And, uh, and people ask often, was I on drugs? I've never tried a drug in my life. My first time ever drinking champagne was my wedding two years ago. Uh, so it wasn't any type of an addiction yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I think it's a misconception that a lot, right. a lot of people have. Right. I spent two weeks on the streets to yeah. do a story with the homeless, and I found out that the, you know, we, we drive past them. These are people mm -hmm. with real stories and real solutions to things, but right. we have to stop and actually get to know them. What's the one thing that you learn from those people in the population that we call homeless that all of us need to know? Gratitude. When you have lost everything, I mean, somebody dropping by and giving you a dollar, it may seem like oh, I'll just give them that dollar. But to the person that's receiving that, that could make their whole day. If they haven't eaten, I've gone weeks without eating yeah. before. Yeah, and sometimes but it's not about even buying the food. I had a person tell me it's the fact that you recognize that I was there. That's you, the key. You made Because you become human. invisible. Yeah. That's right. All right. How did you work your way off the streets? Because you dealt with all kinds of things. You were hungry. Uh, you lost teeth. Mm -hmm. You became suicidal. You were depressed. That's right. That's right. It was a downward spiral. That's right. Um, I had I had people that believed in me. Uh, one of my closest friends to this day, his name's Jay Tell. He's my production partner. He was there when I was homeless. Um, and he and the people that were in our circle, when I got out of that situation, uh, a friend named Gary allowed me to come live on the sofa, got a job at a collection agency to build another studio. It, it was always focused on getting to where I am now yeah. and, uh, and, and faith. I yeah. mean, that's at the core of it all. All right, so you started building back up. Yeah. Uh, you got that job, went to church, because you've mentioned a few times, it's like, you know, you, you seven is the number of completion. That's right. uh, the church never left you, even in your most desperate times. No, or the I church say, never, God left, never me. left you. God Jesus never, never left, left me. me. No, I mean, I, I cried out to God when I was 
homeless, like, why am I going through this? And, and it seems fantastical, but God spoke back to me. Yeah. And he said, I want you to pay attention to every detail of what you're going through because one day I'm gonna take these trials and make them your testimony. God said, one day I'm gonna win stellar awards, I'm gonna win Dove awards, win Grammys. One day I'll have number one albums and the world will know my name, but it won't be for my glory, it will be for his glory. Wow. Deborah. Yeah. And you got that call one day, hey, there's a nomination. Yeah. So take us through that moment there yeah, and how surreal um, that must have been. I was working with an artist. Uh, I had a friend of mine that was a part of the project that called me. I was working in corporate America at the time, still building. Got a call, said, go to iTunes. You got the number one album in the country. And I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> um, and that album, uh, we, we won our first Stellar Award, won our first Dove Award. Uh, the next album that we did with that same artist, February of the next year, won a Grammy for Best Gospel Album. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The Bridge Life, you have a full production house, yes. and it's right here in Houston. People seem to think, you know, and rightfully so, it's just the way it's kind of happened, that you have to go to New York, or you have to go to L.A. or maybe right. Nashville to get it done, and, and you're doing it right here in Houston. That's right. I mean, Houston is a place that embraced me. Houston is where God gave me a story of victory. Uh, and there's so much talent here in the city, and I'm really big on why does it have to be L.A.? Why does it have to be New York? Why yeah. does it have to be Miami or Nashville? Those are great places, but so is Houston. Yeah. So the Bridge Life is basically a company that the name comes from. We are the bridge between where you are and where your dreams are, where you want to be. So whatever you want to do, we can help you get there with a bridge between those. And we do everything from production, songwriting, to shooting videos, to marketing and helping you come up with a strategy. Because if you have the greatest song in the world but nobody hears it, does it really matter? Yeah. We can help with all aspects of that. That's all right. You say soon the world will know your name, not yes. necessarily just because of the, the, the business you're in, right. but the, the story that you want to share of hope. Right. When you live in a world with so much negativity, and when every time you turn on the news, there is somebody fighting and saying something negative about somebody else, there is a dearth of hope. There's a, there's a, a void for people to have something to believe in. I don't care if they believe in me, but I want them to believe that the same God that delivered me has the power to turn their lives around too. I know what it is to be in the lowest place. I know what it is to not think I'm gonna live to see tomorrow and then to go from that to a place where now I'm singing around the world and yeah. impacting millions. I mean, we've, we've written songs and produced music that's reached millions and millions of people. Yeah. I couldn't envision that when I was eating out of a trash can. Wow. The same God that gave me the hope and the faith to endure in the midst of that, he's still here today. All right. Two things I want you to leave us with. Yeah. One of them is when you see a homeless person on the street, mm. what do you want us to resonate with? Remember that's a person and that life is, uh, it may not be drugs, it may not be addiction. Yeah. A lot of people- It almost are, doesn't matter what it is, it, no one just really wants to be homeless. No, I mean, well, th there are people that life has become so difficult that this it's easier for them yeah. to just stay yeah. to check out. Rules but, are hard, yeah. But remember that that's a person, that's somebody's son, that's somebody's daughter, and that they are worthy of the same amount of dignity that you would ascribe to somebody in corporate America or at church or yeah. wherever else you go. Yeah. Uh, if I see somebody hungry, I may not give them money, but I'm always stop and go buy something to eat for them. I'm, I, I know what it's like. Yeah. And I want people to, even if you've never been in that situation, don't judge. Uh, you never know when you might be in that situation. That's right. um, okay, and the next thing I wanna ask you, because we were asked this all the time, uh, the best advice for someone who wants to sing. And I think sometimes mm. they look at the end goal, like I'm gonna right. be Beyonce, be who you are in the moment, right? right. And, and then enjoy the journey. Right. So uh, the best advice for those people who they wanna do that as a career, but they get stunted because they think they need to start at the top. Got it. Three things. One, learn the business. It's the music business for a reason. Um, two, perfect your craft. Become the best singer that you can be. Don't worry about comparing to other people. And number three is focus on the things that make you unique because you can't be, there's no need for another Beyonce. We already have her. Yeah, right? And, and I don't think you're gonna top her. You're okay? not gonna top her. Beyonce's on top, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not gonna top her at being her, but yeah, nobody exactly. can top you at being you. Yeah. And if you hone into the thing that makes you unique, you're gonna always win with And that. number four, sing where you can. Come on. E even your daddy's church. Come All on. right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, God bless you. God bless you.